All right, co-main event time. Where they're cooking up these co-main events lately, I'll never know. <laughs> Kevin Vieira versus Yana Kunitskaya. Locke, can you get us going? Yeah, this one, uh, you really got to look at the, the weigh-in for this one, right? She misses oh by two pounds. Now, this is the difference between the Jared, Jared Gordon miss. This is the difference between the Dr Draco Rodriguez miss, where you got somebody that's just two pounds over, barely two pounds over. So you can tell even when she's weighing in that it's it definitely affected her. That's, that's a weight cut that will have an effect in this fight, which is, you know, has me a little bit hesitant. Caitlin Vieira just... If she isn't at full capacity, I think she's going to have some troubles later in this fight. And she has shown troubles in her past fights in the third round. Um, the, the one that comes to mind for Yana Kunitskaya is her kind of just getting lit up a little bit by Mary and Renault in the third round. But, uh, you know, after that fight, she's been pretty good in terms of just going back to what her bread and butter is. It's, you know, clinching up her opponents, pushing them up against the cage, kind of overpowering them, and then just landing these uh, dirty shots, you know, the, the knees, the dirty boxing, just doing the work, trying to accrue uh, all that control time. And uh, this is one of the first fights I've ever seen where uh, in the Stoliarenko fight where she's pinning her up against the cage, doing her work, and Stoliarenko is just trying to drop down. And you see Yana Kunitskaya just holding her up. And that's like the first time you've ever seen that because more often than not, you see fighters that have that clinch control and that cage control, they want to eventually get their opponent to the ground. Whereas Yana's like, I don't want any of this Lithuanian Ronda Rousey type of shit that you're going to be throwing up an arm bar at me. That's not going to happen. That, that's what Yana Kunitskaya was staying away from, and she was successful in doing so. She did find herself in the guard of Yulia sometimes, and she did a good, uh, made a good account of herself in terms of just staying in that guard, landing some good damage, staying away from the submissions. There were a couple close ones, but she still gutted it out, got out, and then got this fight back to the feet and back to that clinch. That cage fucking is pretty much 101 Yana Kunitskaya. Is she going to be successful in doing that against Ketlin Vera? I don't think so especially in those first two rounds. Now, that's the type of fight that's going to wear down a fighter that has the possible cardio issues that Vieira is going to showcase after a bad weight cut like this, right? If this fight's mainly just the muscling each other, pushing each other up against the cage, digging under hooks, that's going to wear her out. And that gives me a little bit of concern if you're a Vieira backer, especially at that chalk line that she's at, like the minus 250, minus 260 line. So if you're the type to hedge, Hedging on Yana Kunitskaya at minus, or plus 220, you could do a lot better than that, right? You're, you're getting a pretty good line on an underdog who seemed looked to be in much better shape at the weigh-ins. Um, but let's take that aside. In terms of the striking and, and the fighting capabilities of both women, I give the slight advantage here to Ketlin Vera on the feet. I think she's the better striker. Her output leaves a little bit to be desired, so that's a little bit of a concern. But she's the much heavier striker. I don't want to look too far into the Irene Aldana knockout. That's her coming off of nearly a two-year layoff, uh, being a little bit too confident, you know, being the, the undefeated dog in the 135-pound division, uh, coming in as a heavy favorite in that fight as well, too. Um, you know, her first, her Ashley Evans Smith fight, she comes in as a plus 145 dog. The Sarah McMahon fight, she comes in as a plus 170 dog. After she pulls off that submission, now it's minus 200 city. Minus 210 against Kat, uh, Kat Zingano. Minus 240 against Irene Aldana. And then minus 220 in her last fight against uh, Sajara Eubanks. Again, another one. Heavy chalk. Where you're expecting her to go out there and do what she does. Get a couple takedowns. Get a couple uh, minutes of control time from on top. Land some, some shots from on top. But man, that weight miss and the way she looked on the scales just gives me too much pause here. And already, already with her at minus 270, I'm kind of laying back like i have a little bit on her in a parlay i might look to potentially hedge out a little bit on the kunitskaya part uh that that way and just just left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth and considering how close she fights to her opponent's level kunitskaya could maybe squeeze this one out so yeah i will say that the odds are a little bit too wide for this fight this fight will play out much closer um but at the end of the day if we get ketlin vira at maybe 85 percent, 80 percent i think she out muscles yana kunitskaya and we don't get yana clinch fucking her um and even at range whenever Kun Sky is going to close and try to make that point fighting style uh come to fruition here i think we'll see Caitlin kind of just counter properly land the bigger shots and mainly keep yana kunitskaya on the outside so i'll go with Caitlin, but man that weight miss is is a little bit of a, a of a of a concern so i'll take her by decision but just be very wary and proceed with caution in this fight because if Vieira looks anywhere near she does when she's her best she wins this fight but you're, now you're adding in all these other caveats. It's a little bit sketchy for me, but I'll still go with the, the Vieira side here. Absolutely. Cody, who you got? Yeah, I can't really add a whole lot more onto that. But what I will mention is that with Ketlin Vieira, I didn't really was never really sold on her to begin with. Her fights in the UFC, Kelly Fashels, right? She got severely outstruck and won a split decision. Like, what? 
The Ashley Evan Smith fight, she narrowly outstruck her by three strikes, 71 to 68 against Ashley Evan Smith. Relatively, relatively competitive fight, by the way. It's like, woof. Sarah McMahon fight, she got dominated in the first round. The second round, she was losing until she ended up getting the submission, but she got outstruck by Sarah McMahon 29 17. So it's like, okay. The Casangano fight, she big time got outstruck at the Casangano fight, wins a split decision, but it's like you could argue she lost that fight. And then she gets knocked out in the first round by Aurene Aldana. Aldana, superior striker for sure, got the boxing, got the range, got the good jab, but like not really known for her knockouts by any stretch. And so now it's like you've got four lackluster wins. I'll bite it shows Sarah McMahon, a former title challenger, and Kat Zingano, a former title challenger. N- name brand, we'll give her that. But like never like run away like, holy shit, look at this girl. She's a title challenger. Like she's got well-rounded skills. Like, you know, she's squeaking out these wins. Gets knocked out by Aldana. And then the Eubanks fight. She actually had got outstruck by Sinjara Eubanks, 69 to 68. The two takedowns are what saved her. Her cardio looked okay, but it didn't look great. What I'm saying is that like there's never been a runaway performance for her. It was like, wow, she looks tremendously good. So her being 270 over Kunitskaya, you know, the larger fighter uh, who also has an equal amount of experience, trains at uh, Jackson Winklejohn, spent some time at ATT with Tiago Santos and this and that. You've seen in the Julia Storienko fight, like Julia is way overmatched. It shouldn't be there. But you see that it's a good game plan of just like zap out all of this girl's energy through the clinch and then take advantage of her. Kaitlyn Vieira doesn't have a very good gas tank. Kellen Vera missing weight by two pounds is a bad sign. A similar game plan would be very effective. Clinch her up against the cage, zap out her energy, and as she starts to get tired, then you can use the open space a little bit. Then you can use the open field, land a few strikes, outwork her ever so slightly, go to a close decision, squeak out a close decision. So I'm hitting a pass, but if I had to say what the value side of this fight is, I think I'd say Yannitz Kunikea by decision, which is like plus 335. It's a totable, like, you know, possible situation, big line, but ultimately, the UFC is giving you this co event. I don't know. I don't know who they're trying to promote. I don't know why. I think there's a lot of better spots on the card. You know, cool. We had the Macy Barber fight Alexa Grosso last weekend. But, like, this doesn't have to be a trend. Like, just put put exciting fights. Put the best fight. Like, I don't, I don't know that this falls in either category. <laughs> but regardless, hit me with a pass as far as, like, actually betting my hundred money on it. Isn't that the truth? Guru, who are you betting on? Yeah, man. I mean, in this fight, I don't think I'm going to be putting a bet down on either side, but I'm going to go with Ketlin, man. I, I just feel like Ketlin, um, they, they kind of broke it down, but I, I think Yana, I mean, her best trait is to, uh, you know, put you in the clinch, control you. I think Ketlin is one of the stronger girls in that division. She's a judo black belt. So I could see her, you know, hitting some takedowns in the clinch and Yana isn't very good off of her back. I mean, we've seen, uh, girls like Tanya Evinger just dominate Yana Kunitskaya on the ground, even though she did an arm bar, uh, Tanya one time but you know in this fight I mean I don't see her submitting a girl like Vieira and I I think on the feet Vieira is probably a better striker as well but you know the weight cut and the uh, miss does kind of worry me a little bit but I just think it's a pretty bad matchup for Yana I'm with you I'm with you guys fully like um you know I first off Locke, you talked about sketchy. Yeah, dude, this that's the only that's what I got to say about this fight. Pure sketch city. And I was way sketched out about this fight pre Ketlin Vieira looking the worst out of anyone at weigh-ins. And this wasn't one of those cuts where she just kind of gave up. I believe she tried to get down to the weight, really pushed herself, looked really bad, didn't make it, missed the weight ever so slightly. Uh, I mean, still was three pounds off, but uh yeah, man, it, that's more than enough. I was already off this fight from a from a betting standpoint. I'm going to take Ketlin Vieira. I do think she is the slightly better fighter, but man, I just feel totally confident in saying Yana Kunitskaya at plus 225 or whatever she's at. I mean, that's absolutely the value side. And I wouldn't be surprised one bit if she won the fight. However, I do think Ketlin's the better fighter. I just really question, you know, the, the shortcomings we've seen from Ketlin Vieira all fall in line with looking even worse with this bad weight cut. So uh, absolute and full pass for me. I think it's a dog or pass situation. I'm going to go ahead and pass.